Welcome to African Lenezi. I have with me today <laughs> a very special guest, and he's going to give us a little briefing about the people of Keta, which is in the Volta region of Ghana. This is part of the Sankofa, going back to my roots or our roots, um, brief discussion. I'll get out of shot. So that's okay. mm-hmm. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Good afternoon. Uh, Your Majesty, today mm-hmm. is a, a special day which I would like to meet and I'd like to introduce you to my, to my audience. This is going to be a very brief chat. So if yeah. you can tell us who you are, yeah. title. My name is Toby Kumasa, one of the local chiefs in the Zarkova Township. I'm a retired headmaster, educationist, and an author. In 2014, one of my books won the the Africana Book Award of Washington, D.C. The title is Once Upon a Time in Ghana. I also wrote on our migration from Babylon or Iraq to where we are now. It's called the Migration Saga of the anglo Evers of Ghana. And I also wrote another one, The Dilemma of the Elite Traditional anglo Evers Christian, in which I examined how our culture compared to other cultures, the, the differences, the similarities. I'm the spokesperson of the king of the Anglos. Whatever you want to say to the public, I represent him. So that is who I am. Mm-hmm. Are, I got my grandson too. Yes. Mm-hmm. We are eternally grateful you had some time for us. Mm-hmm. And just for my audience, and for some of us who are very, more or less, a little bit lost yeah. from home, yeah. From away from home, if you could just uh, give us a brief of as to how Keta came about and how the people of Keta came yeah. to be. Perhaps if you could speak up a bit. Okay. Yeah, the people of Keta are called Anglos. And the word Anglo means scribe okay. or to coil. Okay. Yeah, we are supposed to be the scribes of the Aves or the Hebrews. Uh, we migrated briefly, according to some sources, from the lost continent. Okay. That is between Australia and Southeast Asia. <laughs> Papua, Hawaii, they were the remnants of that lost continent. From there, our people migrated to China. And from China, they came to India. And then they settled in Babylon now called Iraq. That's one source. Another source said when the the Nebuchadnezzar invaded Palestine, some remnants of the Aves or the Hebrews escaped and they also migrated to Iraq and then continued the journey to here. Another third source said the second son of Noah when I shame Ham Japheth, Ham had a settlement in Iraq called Ajatomi. And he was there before the God confused the language of the people to meet his desire for people to cover the face of the earth. And so people moved to Egypt. All the three sources converged in Egypt. And so from Egypt, they migrated to the Sudan. Okay. From the Sudan, they went to Ethiopia, called Abyssinia. Uh, they left Egypt because the Arabs were harassing them. You know, those North African countries were people by Africans, not by Arabs as today. And they, it, it happened that uh, through, through invasions, they pushed the Africans southwards. And that's how they came to live in the Sudan. In the Sudan, they settled on the sandy part of the desert. You know, the Sudan has three parts. You have the red egg and the rocky. You have the rocky part, you have the stony part, and the sandy part. So they settled on the sandy part. And they founded 
a certain man called Katum. Mm -hmm. Now called Katum. Okay. Katum means inside the sandstorm. Oh. Yeah, so the K is sand. Okay. And when you have a, a storm, you say two. A home too. So Katum means in the roaring sandstorm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so see. that's why they settled. So, but they were still being pursued by the Arabs. So they moved eastwards to Abyssinia. Mm -hmm. Now, Ethiopia. When they were there, they were even again being harassed by the Indians. Okay. The Indians came over the Indian Ocean, and because they could not withstand them, they moved southwest west and settled at the, the Niger Bend. Okay. They were there when the old Ghana Empire was founded. You know, the old Ghana Empire, the word Ghana means hyena. It means? Hyena. Hyena. Yes. The yeah, it's an animal. <laughs> and that is the emblem of the empire. Okay. So the word Ghana is an every word. Ghana means uh, the hyena. The, when the, the Ghana empire was about to by the Mali empire, one of the most powerful kings was Mari Jata. One more time. Marizata. Marizata. Yeah. Okay. The word Marizata means the Mari resembles a lion. Oh. Zata is lion. Okay. It resembles this D. So, Madi Zata. He was given that uh, accolade because of his bravery. Mm -hmm. He was very fierce in war in battle. Mm -hmm. So, when the Songa Empire invaded the Mali Empire, the people did not want to stay again. And then they moved eastwards okay. into Nigeria and they stayed in Ilefe. Okay. They were in Ilefe, that is Oyo State. Mm -hmm. They were there when the Oyo Empire started to rise. Then they moved westwards again to Tado. Mm -hmm. They were in Tado, but they were being invaded by the Yoruba people. Okay. So they moved west again to Ngochi. It was in Ngochi that they settled as an, an every state. And they, they lived for many, many years. Many chiefs ruled them until the last of their kings was Agokoli. Mm -hmm. Agokoli became the chief of all the Avis. When they were in Ngochi, they were called Dogbo because they once stayed in Dogbo Nibo. Okay. And because that's where they came from, so they are called Dogbo. And one day, a scaffold broke between one Ngochi man and one Dogbo man. And it was uh, the man who was in question had been harassing the Dogbo. He would come to the village and capture their goats, their fowls. And because they were thought to be strangers, they had no right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they were just waiting for their time. So when he fought the, the Dogbo man, he wounded him. So the Dogbos took their compatriot home for treatment. Now when they brought him home, an elder died in the in during those the in, in, no, during those days that they were treating the injured okay. man. He was called Aga. So they decided to send word to our colleague that the man, his kinsman, for died. Yeah, but he didn't die. So by the law and custom prevailing, those if you kill, they will kill you. So because they wanted the man dead, that was why they told that lie that Aga died. So our colleague painfully handed over Senua, and the 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 war killed him. Now they made a, an oath that no one should reveal this. And then they fixed a date for the funeral of the, the supposedly dead Aga. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now when they were beating the drums and singing, there was a lot of food and drinks. And one elderly person overdrank. <laughs> and he made the infamous statement that we are Aja people. Because the village they came from Ajatomi, okay. the settlement founded by Ham. Even today, when you are coming, I will say, Mizam, Mizam, Mizam. It's a rhetoric question. I'm asking whether you are from Aja. So you say, Mi Zau Ago, Mi Azawi, we are from Aja. Because in those days of insecurity, you don't know who is coming. So you. you have to be tactical. Tactical. You have to use like the coded. Welcome message. Mizawe, Mizawe, Mizawe. And there is one 
Me as I go, me as I go. Yeah, we are from Aja. We are, we are part of you, I go. So, he made a statement We are the Ajas, the Avengers for the living. Now, who was the living? The meaning that the man they claimed to died didn't die. He's still alive. He was still alive. So, that infamous statement reached Agokoli, and he turned to a very gentle tyrant. He, he sent people after Aga, and then Aga escaped with some trusted friends. He came to Agaveji, and found Agaveji there. He came to Abolova. He was running, running away from them. Then he, he went to Adode Kofa, across the Volta River. So he found a lot of settlements. Today you have uh, Agavao mm -hmm. as a whole group of people. Mm -hmm. They all descended from him. Oh, okay. um, so when that thing became news now, Abakoli tried to punish them. So he started to force wars on them, okay. ostensibly to expand his empire. He, he, he felt that they would be killed in their wars. But the more he suppressed them, the more they multiplied. And the other decided that enough was enough, that they should leave Mochi okay. and look for a new place. Yeah, so they sent most, some of their best hunters to search for either unoccupied lands or sparsely people land. Because they know they could drive out, if the people are not very many, they could drive them out and occupy them. The people went and after some months they came back and they saw that the area was sparsely populated. So they went back and preparations to depart from Mochi began in earnest. One of the punishments he gave them was to build a wall around the Mochi township. So they had a very huge wall. You can still find the remnants if you go to Moche today. Okay. It's about 24 feet wide. 24 feet wide? Yes. That's a very wide wall. Yes. And then the height is also about 18 feet. So you can actually set a count of that. Sure. Okay. Sure. You see? So I don't mean to interrupt you. Mm. We hear about such walls also all the way to the Middle East. You heard of the war in, in China, China, the Great Wall of China. In, it was one of the best defenses at that time. Oh, okay. Because they set people on top of the wall. So they are the sentries. Oh, okay. So they'll be watching over the city, even in the night. Okay. Even Jericho was a wall city. Okay. Because they came from there, they had that experience of building. Agokoli was also an heavy. Okay. But they uh, left earlier. They were there before these people came. <laughs>